Let's talk about Proposition 59. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us what is it, what's the wording for the Prop 59? Right, so Proposition 59 um, is California. California's Proposition 59, the Overturned Citizens United Act, um, is a voter instruction, which is a very particular mm -hmm. thing that used to be used quite a lot, and it's used less frequently now, but um, it is enshrined in the California Constitution, Article 1, Section 3A, that we have the right to instruct our representatives. Um, we, the people, have that right. And so we are asking the people of California if they will instruct their representatives uh, to pass uh, an amendment to the U.S. Constitution to overturn Citizens United um, and all of the applicable judicial precedents. And it will instruct them to use all of their constitutional authority to do that, to allow for um, the full limitation or regulation of money in, pro in politics, uh, to make clear that corporations do not have the same constitutional rights as human beings. Um, and there's another lovely part of it which guarantees our right to freely express ourselves to one another, which is um, a little talked about and I think very interesting and, and lovely part of this as we watch our uh, right to assemble, uh, to speak, to express our views being curtailed in all kinds of arenas, um, whether it's, you know, supposed free speech zones, um, right, you'll notice that that there are zones where, right, and, and yet the money has no zone. Um, and uh, these are all uh, perversions. And uh, we've got a campaign um, underway that we call Adopt Your Candidates, where volunteers are signing up to um, take control, uh, take responsibility for a single race um, in their districts, whether that be an assembly race, a state senate race, or uh -huh. a congressional race. And they go out to both candidates. You know, we have the top tier um, system in California, which I don't necessarily like, but for our purposes, because there are only two candidates for every office, by and large, uh, and asking them to sign a pledge saying that they will abide by the instruction of their constituents uh, as expressed by the vote on Prop 59. Um, uh, Senator Ben Allen, um, who uh, championed the Overturned Citizens United Act in 2016, um, uh, became the first uh, office holder to sign that pledge. Um, Congressman Ted Lieu, who uh, championed the bill for us in 2014, was the second person uh, to, sign, um, to sign that pledge. Uh, and we actually have a Republican signer, um, and, uh, and we've banked quite a few um, legislators uh, and would-be legislators, candidates, um, who have signed this pledge. And we hope that this will be something that we not only can use uh, after November 8th to uh, make good on the instruction, um, but between now and then, it will give voters an opportunity to know uh, who among the people who want to represent them are actually dedicated to meaningful reform um, and who are not. What are the obstacles you are facing? <laughs> I know it's a tough where, thing, yeah. <laughs> where, I mean, should, should yeah, um, I don't know, should we start with the court case? Should we start with the media blackout? Um, should we start with... Uh, you know, folks who theoretically should be on our side who are not. Um, you know, my greatest fear about this is that we will not have maximized um, the power that a California vote can have. Um, and uh, that, to me, would be a tragedy uh, because California does have the capacity to move uh, to move the country. Um, and I hope that all of our friends in the reform movement, you know, understand how important that is. Um, what we found um, in recent polling, you may have seen that um, Tom Steyer actually uh, and NextGen gave an in-kind donation of uh, $61,000 to fund a poll 
for us, and that was extremely useful. But what we found in that poll was people don't connect Citizens United necessarily to what's going on in their lives. They do connect money and politics. They do connect corporate spending. But again, they don't know the actual Citizens United. But with a very little bit of education, uh, we move from being um, you know, slightly favored by the electorate to being overwhelmingly favored by the electorate. And so our ability to reach the electorate with just a really simple message uh, will be critical to whether or not um, we can harness the power of California to really make change here. Um, and uh, I am, I'm hopeful that we, that we will. Um, you know, we have an unbelievable uh, volunteer force, but um, you know, the, the, the pervasive silence about this issue. Also, obviously, we have you know a tremendous amount of opposition from something like the Los Angeles Times, who have been resent, uh, relentlessly um, uh, critical of this, whether it was ballot bloat or um, the criticisms that we're trying to rewrite the First Amendment. We actually got that from um, another op-ed board uh, conversation which just blew me away because we're not touching the First Amendment. We're trying to undo the damage that Lewis Powell did when he rewrote the First Amendment. Um, and so, um, you know, this is a, a, a bit of a complex issue. There are steps to take in order to get to the understanding and, and the place where you have to go. But um, it is a simple line to get there. People do get it. Um, the other thing we found in our poll was that, as I said, once they hear the, um, any of our messages and all of our messages work, whether it's corporations aren't people, money isn't speech, corporations shouldn't have constitutional rights, corporations, if, if they were paying their fair share of taxes and not getting tax subsidies, you know, you'd have better roads, schools, water, air, all of those things, everything works. Even after they hear the negative messages that, you know, it's, ineffective and it's censorship and you know all of the things that would be thrown at us um, people do not come off that position of having been convinced that they should vote yes um, and so that's what we need to do between now and November 8th is get that message um, to as many Californians as we possibly can well you haven't been accused of getting rid of Second Amendment, so we are like one <laughs> yeah. step ahead. <laughs> right. Yes. You know, I try not to speak to that, um, but I, I would uh, have a lot to say about it. <laughs> not now. I won't do that now. <laughs> um, talk about what organizations, grassroots people can do. Well, go to our website yes on ca59.com um, and uh, disseminate the information that's there um, to your friends, families, coworkers, whatever lists you have. Um, the Adopt Your Candidates program is also on a tab there and in fact it's, it's on the front page too. Um, and all of that information about how to do that, it's really easy, it's also really fun. Um, what people find in election season is when they call up their candidates they get responses because now is that the sweet spot that only moment where they actually do need your vote and they will respond um, and we have Google spreadsheets up there so that you know you can plug your name in when you decide to adopt your candidate or um, if that seems daunting or complex, you can just fire off an email to one of us. Um, we're responding to everyone individually. Uh, and of course, if you have a few spare dollars and want to help us actually reach California voters. Okay, thank you. Last words are yours. Please talk to the voters. Uh, I would urge you to get out to vote. Um, and I would urge the understanding that this is the most critical issue of our day. This is, I, I define the ideas of money is free speech and corporate constitutional rights as being the twin-headed hydra that is crushing our democracy. And this is our moment in California to make noise about this. And if you join us 
And if we win, if we get a mandate on this, we will be able to hold our Congress members to account, our California legislators to account, and even the President of the United States to account. What we need is a groundswell. Uh, we need a movement. Uh, the kindling has been laid. We know that everyone in America connects money and politics to the troubling uh, landscape that we see all around us, this massive dysfunction that this election, more than any other, has laid bare. Um, and you must go to the polls, and you must vote, and you must vote yes on Prop 59. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Mansoor.